experiment that I work on, we've made changes both to the detector and to the analysis software that we use to analyze the data. Uh, so one of the biggest changes that, that I was involved with was a new layer of pixel detectors. And these are like the sensors in your camera. And this goes at the very heart of the Atlas detector and improves our ability to track particles throughout the detector. The particles, though, are actually being accelerated, are they not, uh, more quickly than they were before? Yeah, so the, the particles have a, a higher energy. Um, so before we were colliding at um, 7 and then at 8 uh, tera electron volts. And now we're colliding um, at double the energy at 13 tera electron volts. And this is the highest energy that we've ever been at. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, just tell us in more detail what you hope to discover through this. Um, so the interesting thing about this, uh, this run at the LHC is that before we were looking for the Higgs boson, uh, we kind of knew what we wanted to discover, whether it would be there or not. Um, but now we're not, we're not sure what else is out there. We know what we want to look for, but it's a completely uncharted territory. Um, so as you mentioned, one of the things we'd like to look for is dark matter. And we know that this exists, and there's four times more dark matter in our universe uh, than, than matter. And this is, matter is galaxies and planets and everything uh, that we can see in space. And there's four times more stuff than that, and we don't know what it is. So it, do you, it's do, very Do you actually know that it exists, or is postulating its existence what makes your equations work? There's a bit of a difference. Uh, so we can infer its existence from measurements. So, for example, some of the first measurements were of uh, galaxies and how they rotated in space. And they rotated faster than the amount of matter that we measured in them. And so um, there must be more something with gravity within the galaxies holding it together that we couldn't measure. So we do know that it exists, but we're not, we, we can't measure it because it's not like standard matter. I understand that the restart of the collider wasn't without issues today. It's had a few bumpy moments, let's say, after the launch. Is that right? Uh, so there was a, a minor uh, issue today, but it wasn't to be unexpected. I mean, this is a brand new machine, and um, we have to be very careful to make sure that we do all the correct tests as we're uh, getting to the collision energy. So there was an incident where the beam had to be, um, we call it uh, dumping the beam. So this is just a removing the beam that we have and starting again, and this is completely normal. So it set us back by about an hour, but to be fair, we've been waiting for two years, so one more hour doesn't matter. Is this just about the pursuit of pure knowledge, or if you're successful, what are the implications? Um, so, I mean, primarily it is about pushing the boundaries of, of human knowledge and trying to understand our universe, and that's very exciting. Um, but we know from the history of science that when we, when we do this, when we discover um, things that we had no idea about before, we, there are inventions and applications that come from it that then are relevant in everyday life. So, for example, the World Wide Web uh, was invented at CERN 25 years ago to help physicists talk to each other. And many medical applications like PET scanners um, which are now very common in hospitals, came from the kinds of research that we do at CERN. So for me, it's about pushing the boundaries of, of our knowledge, but there are many applications that can come from it.